It is so good to be here today. I uh, am really honored to be here. I want to thank just Pastor Glenn and Sophie, Sophia. They told me not to make a, a deal about them, but uh, I just want to publicly honor you and show my appreciation for putting up with Paul all these years. Um, it was coming. It had to come. And I want to thank them for, uh, for having us here today. And uh, so, so, so good to be here. I also want to bring greetings from my pastors, Pastor Russell and Sam. They rave about this church and are good friends with your pastors, Pastor Russell and Sam. And uh, it's just like going to different parts of the family all over the world. And so, so good to be here. I'm one of the campus pastors there, as Paul said. And uh, uh, three kids, one wife. Uh, that's all I could do. That's all I could handle. Come on, somebody. And, uh, but it, it is good. Hey, just before you sit down, um, where's he gone? There was a guy sitting right here with the checkered shirt. He's gone, hasn't he? Oh, he will come back soon and he'll, he'll wreck the service. I'm just joking. It's all good. Hey, would you just lift your hands? We're just going to take a moment to open up our hearts before God's Word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Come on, just lean into His presence right now. Right from the start of, of our praise and worship this morning, man, the anointing's been strong. Father, we just lean into you today, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, we worship your name. We bless you today, Father. You're so good, Lord. And we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your power, God. We thank you for your spirit. Father, your spirit is here today without measure. And I want to pray, Father, that even as we come around your word, that your anointing would be released, Father. That, the, that heaven would invade earth today. I declare, Father, as we come around your word, as we come in agreement with your word and we fall out of agreement with our circumstances, I declare, Father, and thank you that signs and wonders follow the preaching of the gospel. I thank you today that bodies are going to be healed, Father. Cancer is going to be healed. Mental illness. You've been having a fogginess and a heaviness. Jesus is going to touch you today. Come on, if that's you, just stretch out. Just reach out. Just reach out. Just reach out and touch Him today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. I declare this a breakthrough service, a breakthrough moment in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, are you ready for God's Word today? Go ahead and grab a seat. And as you're doing that, just look to your neighbor and say, you are looking so beautiful. My goodness. Thanks, guys. My good. Turn to the other neighbor you just ignored. I'm not sure what you're thinking about them. Just tell them Jesus loves them. It's all good. You're going to be okay. God looks at the heart. It's all good. It is so good to be here, and uh, I'm excited to, to bring a message this morning to you, and uh, a, a message that I really pray just uh, inspires you, whether you're in this room or maybe you're joining us somewhere around the world uh, through our online campus here at Audacious Church, wherever you are, uh, God is not limited uh, by where you might be sitting this morning, today, whether you're uh, in a cafe streaming this somewhere or wherever you might be, you might be here in this auditorium today. But I've got in my heart for you today, and I believe that God is going to do something miraculous in your life. Can you just help me preach for a moment? Is that all right? Because I really believe maybe this message isn't for you, but I know that there are a whole lot of people here today that you might have walked in feeling a bit down, a bit depressed, maybe a bit disorientated with the direction of your life. And I believe today is your day of breakthrough. Somebody say amen. I believe today you walked in heavy, you're going to walk out free. Come on. I believe today you walked in kind of hopeless and heavy 
heavy and and I uh, I really sense in my spirit that there's just people you've been struggling with all sorts of mental illness and fogginess and heaviness and you dragged yourself to church here today. You only just made it. But friend, I'm glad you did because I'm here to declare over you right now that today is your day of breakthrough. Just like we woke up to those blue clouds, just like we woke up to that nice blue sky, that's what your vision, your clarity, your thinking is going to be like. Go ahead and thank God because He is a God that sets people free. So good. So good. Whoops, I got excited. Did something. That's good. Hey, we're going to go in our Bibles this morning. I want to invite you. uh, It's going to be on the screens as well there if you didn't bring your Bibles. Uh, But we're going to go to Luke chapter 8 this morning. A story, if you've been in church for a while, you would certainly recognize. It's a famous story. We love preaching about it. And today, I don't... uh, don't, uh, uh, my intent isn't to bring you anything maybe you haven't heard, but simply to remind you of who, ha- who our Jesus is and what he can do in your life. Isn't it true that we, you and I, we can just go through the motions, can't we? We can sit in good church, have a good time, be in world-class praise and worship, have, have an amazing atmosphere, amazing moments, but we can be like those people in church life, not this church, other churches I've been in, but we can be in a place where we're not actually receiving anything because we are, we stop expecting. We started expecting from man and we stopped expecting from God. I believe any time we come around God's Word, we should stop expecting from man. We're not, we're not opening up our hearts to receive something from a style of preacher. We're opening up our hearts to receive something from the very Word of God. And I don't know about you, but I know in my life, and I really believe it, that when you open up your heart to re- receive something from heaven, then that's what you're going to receive. My pastor says all the time, you get what you honor. You receive from what you honor. Amen. And so today we're going to go into this text. And before we do that, before we read Luke chapter 8, uh, I, want to, I want to start by reading 2 Corinthians chapter 1 from the message translation today. If you're taking notes today, uh, I want you to just... Um, I want you to just get ready. You can write down some of these references and we'll land somewhere in a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. Don't you love that? Whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. In Him, this is what we preach and pray. The great amen, listen to this, God's yes, everybody say yes. yes. And our yes, everybody say yes. Yes. God's yes and our yes together, gloriously evident. God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us by his spirit. He has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure thing of what he is destined to complete. Friend, an encounter with God changes everything in your life. I don't want us to ever underplay or underestimate just what one small touch of who Jesus is can do to your life. We've seen people, in fact, a few weeks ago, we had, had our conference and there was a man that came in. He was a part of my campus. God started moving in a marvelous, a phenomenal way at this conference. And we were praying for a few people. And this man was up the front and I was trying to uh, kind of pastorally care for the, the mayhem that was uh, happening as we were praying for people. And uh, God was good. And this guy got touched by the power of God. And uh, he started crying. He said, to be honest, honest with you, he started making some, a bit of a funny sound, and I'm like thinking, okay, this is awesome, and uh, at church, he's a guy that just rocks up every week and is faithful, he serves in our kids' program week in, week out, but what I didn't know and what, uh, what we didn't know, in fact, what he was keeping a secret from so many is that he was secretly struggling with an addiction to alcohol. Every, he wasn't drinking necessarily to get drunk or anything like that, but he was drinking to really medicate himself, to relief, release the stress and relieve the pressures of life. So every night 
he would be sinking all this alcohol just to get himself to sleep. And this man went down under the power of God. I'm not sure who prayed for him. I'm not even sure he knew who prayed for him. But one touch from God. He sent me an email on the Monday after conference. Matt, I've been completely set free. I haven't touched alcohol now for this entire, since that happened, which was one of the morning sessions. And I don't know about you, but I really believe this day and age, our world need an encounter with Jesus. Our world needs need an encounter. Maybe you're here today and you need that encounter with Jesus. Like I mentioned before, uh, I've got one wife and three, three beautiful children. I've got Ella, she's 10, uh, 10 going on too old. And uh, Hallie, who's seven, and uh, MJ, who's, who's four, turning five. And uh, they're, they're cool kids. I like them. They're okay. I let them stay in the house at night. And um, and I just want to apologize publicly as well because there were people in the foyer. Pastor Glenn was giving me a tour of the, order, of the building. And I'm sure you might have thought I was Paul Garner. And so if you now think Paul Garner is rude, it's just, it was Matt Garner. I just didn't know who you were. In fact, there was a kid in the kids' church. I could tell she was like, who? I know. And she came up and said, I know who you are, Paul Garner. Sorry to let you down. My kids, they love, if you've got a a kid kind of 10 and under, you'd be aware that YouTube released something pretty awesome called YouTube Kids. It's all the crazy cat videos that you and I love without the other craziness of the internet. And so my kids love watching YouTube Kids, and uh, they watch it at times. MJ's into watching really weird stuff. Do any of your kids do this where they're, they're watching kids play on the internet? Can I get a witness, parents? My kids, instead of playing themselves, are watching other kids play on the internet. This got so bad at one point in time, I went outside with, uh, with MJ, my four-year-old, and, said, and he said, let's play, Dad. And I thought we were going to be playing some sort of battle game, some sort of... Paul and I grew up playing armies in the backyard. It was socially acceptable back in those days and politically correct. And we were running around, we were climbing trees, we were doing all these... MJ turns to me, I, I'm thinking, this is going to be great. Like, you know, let's do this, it's going to be fantastic. Let's play, awesome. He said, turns to me and he says to me, uh, he says to me, hey, can we please play Ryan's Toy Reviews? Now, Ryan's Toy Reviews is a four-year-old kid playing with toys on the internet. He said, how, I'll be Ryan and you can be Ryan's dad. I said to him, no, how about I be dad and you be MJ? He looked back to me, no lie, and he said, that would be boring. My kids love it. It's hilarious. One day, my daughter came home, seven years old, and her and her little girlfriends, you know what I mean? They've got sass. They've got attitude. And uh, they pick up all these random things. One day, she comes home, and she's talking, honestly, for about three weeks in hashtags. Everything is hashtag. She doesn't know what a hashtag is, but um, she's speaking in it. I'm like, hey, um, do you want, what do you want for breakfast? Hashtag cornflakes. You know... They come home with these crazy things off the internet. It's quite funny. Another thing Hallie brought home, her and her little girlfriend. I'm not sure if you've seen that video before. It went viral a few years ago of that Filipino gentleman that dressed up in some awesome Filipino getup. And uh, he, was, he, 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 had the, he had the apple and he had the pen. Do you remember that song? Does anyone, just give me a wave so I don't feel like it only happened in Australia. And it's like, I've got a pen. I've got an apple. Oh, apple pen. You know that one? (laughs) I've got a pen. I've got a pineapple. Oh, pineapple pen. (laughs) You remember that? Well, where were you? (laughs) You weren't on the internet. You were behaving like responsible human beings. I feel like you're judging my parenting right now. And I received the correction. Thank you. It makes me a better person. Uh, but she came home singing all this sort of, all this stuff. It was going crazy at one point in time. Honestly, she was, she would be like, there's the couch and there's my bottom. Oh, <laughs> uh, couch bottom. It was just going crazy. It was something of Paul Garner reincarnate in my children. <laughs> and um, and uh, it was, it was I'm, and I'm working out. I'm trying to work out where has this come from, actually. 
And so one night after three or four hours of prayer and fasting, um, the TV was on. No, I just said that. Uh, it wasn't true. The TV was just on. Um, and uh, it was one of those shows, I know you've got them because I think we actually get the English versions of them in Australia um, because all the good things of England get sent to Australia except those criminals that started the nation. And uh, it was one of those 20 to 1 viral videos. And so it got close, and then this Filipino guy comes on, and it all of a sudden made sense. You might be thinking, Matt, what is the relevance of this to the sermon today? And I'm starting to wonder what it is too. (laughs) It's a phenomenal story though. (laughs) Be honest with you, I was reading this scripture after working that out, And I read this, and this is full-on dad joke central, but I want you to get it in your spirit today. You ready to receive it? This is to help you to remember a a point this morning. But I was was reading that that scripture, and literally, I'm not going to say it was the Holy Spirit because it wasn't. It was just my, my mind. But I was reading that scripture, and it said, God's yes and our yes together, glorious evident. You know what appeared in my mind? That song. You have God's yes, you have your yes. Oh, miraculous. (laughs) I'll be here all week, thank you. But you know, so often you and I are waiting for a really clear yes, but I wanna show you this morning like like is in this scripture today that God already sent his yes about your healing, about your deliverance, about your child's salvation, about your business, about the pressure that you're facing. And so often in church life, we're waiting, God, give me a yes. And he's saying, just read the gospels. Your yes is found in the name of Jesus. Somebody say yes today. See, so often we're sitting back We're sitting back paralyzed by what's happening, crippled by our circumstances, wondering, God, maybe this is your will. Maybe it's not your will. Friend, I want to tell you today, anything that's happening in your life that doesn't line line up with what is in heaven, friend, you have the right and you can have the faith to believe that God has already said yes. God has already said, yes, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If there's sickness in your body, God says, he says, yes, you are healed. If you're going through financial hardship, come on, partner with God. Put these principles in place that your pastors and leaders are teaching. Don't just have a yes in your mouth. Have a yes in your behavior. Have a yes in every step, God. There's going to be a discipline. Yes to God. Come on, let's go to this main text this morning. Uh, Luke chapter 8, verse number 42. And Jesus went on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. And they all denied it. Peter said, Master, the people are pressing against you. Sorry, the, the people are pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out of me. Then the woman, seeing that she could go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet in the presence of all the people. She told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Go in peace. Go in peace. I love it how the Bible says that she, she, she realized that she couldn't go unnoticed anymore. An encounter with God changes everything. You know what our churches should look like? Our churches should look like the behavior. In fact, I'll say it like this. Your life and my life should look like the behavior of one that's been touched by Jesus. There should be a demonstration of God's kingdom in every area of your life. There should be an outworking the world. We should be like this woman in this story that can't go unnoticed. 
whether it's here in Manchester or Melbourne for me, wherever it is, but what we're believing for at Planet Shakers Church is that we would be a church that could not go unnoticed by our politicians, could not go unnoticed by, by the world, could not go unnoticed and not go, we wouldn't be noticed for the things that we're against, but rather we would be noticed simply for the message of the good news of Jesus that all I did was reach out and touch him, but life flew, f- flowed through the hem of Jesus' garment. And when I touched him, I didn't earn it. I couldn't work it. I couldn't do all these things and live this really nice, good, moral life. Friend, the kingdom of heaven, when you get saved, it's not about making good people or bad people better people. It's not about taking you from just being a, a nice person person maybe to now being a good person. No, the reason why the gospel, the good news of Jesus is a miracle is because it's not about bad to good. It's actually about dead to alive. The miracle of the gospel, friends, is that you reached out to touch the hem of Jesus' garment and Jesus extended and released his power to come and change you. Somebody say amen. One of the interesting things about this story is that this woman, the Bible clearly says that she struggled with this disease for 12 years. Somebody say 12 years. Just nudge your neighbor a little, say 12 years. 12 years by anyone's standard is a long time. If you're struggling and suffering with a debilitating debilitating disease, 12 years is a long time. It only takes you to know, if you've known sickness for a while, to know that 12 years is a long time. It's a heavy burden after one or two years. Maybe you've still got hope that there's an answer or a solution, but 12 years to be struggling with something that not just is a a physical sickness, but it causes her, it has social consequences. 12 years. The number 12 in the Bible and biblical numerology is an important number. It speaks of divine governance. It speaks of perfection. It speaks of completion. It speaks of authority, the number 12. For this Jewish woman who pressed through the crowd, you've got to understand, friend, she was already feeling unworthy. In so many areas of her life, I'm sure she was already feeling like an outcast. In fact, we know that, the, that any person she touched because of her, un, her, her disease, because it made her unclean, would have had to go through some sort of ritual or ceremony of cleansing and washing. She was a social outcast. She had no right being in that crowd, but the Bible says after 12 years, after she had spent all of her money, the Gospel of Mark accounts, she had spent all of her money on physicians, tried everything humanly possible to get made well. She decides, I've got to try. I've heard about this Jesus. I've heard that when people touch him, miracles happen. I've heard when people, when people called out his name, blind eyes were opened. I heard the story where he multiplied that boy's lunch and fed 5,000. See, friend, I don't want this uh, in your Bible today. You might read it. There might be a title in, uh, over, over this passage of Scripture saying that this was the, the woman with the issue of blood. But I want to give her a new name today. I don't want to call her the woman with the issue of blood anymore. I want to call her because her courage is the loudest thing in this text today. The fact that she was a woman in this society, unclean, separated, she was the lowest of the lows in this, in this demographic. She, she shouldn't have been there, but I want to give her a new name because her courage inspires me. Her desperation preaches a sermon to me that says, Matt, no, whatever, no matter what you're facing and whatever you're going through, just keep going through it. After you've done everything in your 
own strength and done everything you know in that moment. Keep reaching out to God. Friend, I don't want this woman to be known as the woman of issue of blood. I believe she should be known as the woman that reached out because of her courage and touched Jesus. There are so many people here, here sitting here today. Maybe you're watching online campus and I don't know what your story is. Maybe you're like this woman. Maybe you've got hell surrounding your life. Maybe it's an internal thing. Maybe everything looks good and all buttoned down on the outside, but on the inside there's a storm. On the inside there's loneliness. On the inside there's separation. Friend, you can be like this woman too. This woman, she didn't allow, allow her initial condition to be her final conclusion. And I'm here to prophesy over anyone that will receive it today that your initial condition is not your final conclusion. Don't give up halfway through the journey. Go ahead and keep walking because you're getting closer to Jesus. Clap your hands if you believe that today in this church. Your initial condition, sir, over your business right now is not your final conclusion. Come on, in your marriage, wherever you find yourself right now, I'm prophesying over you today that wherever you find yourself, this, this condition you find yourself in is not your final conclusion. God has something greater for your life. God's got something so powerful for you. Your initial condition. Imagine if we watched movies where we got halfway through. Now, I've got to be honest. Paul can testify of this. My mum had a crush on MacGyver. <laughs> Do you remember MacGyver? And all of that fashion is coming back in, so I'm worried about Jan. But anyway, she's probably watching this. So it's awkward. She'll be asking for prayer at the service online campus. <laughs> And, uh, but could you imagine if we watched movies in the same way, where we're like, oh, the, the, the enemy's winning. He's won. Imagine if we walked out halfway through the cinema. No, we don't do that because we know that how it is right now isn't how it's always going to be. We know that MacGyver is going to defuse the bomb with a paper clip and a shoelace. We know that something good is going to happen. We know that God is faithful in His Word, that His promises are yes and amen. We know that no matter what we find ourselves in today, friend, God is going to get glory anyway. And it may be in this time, there's breath in my lungs, or it may be in heaven when I'm glorifying Jesus. But friend, you might as well start thanking Him right now because I'm here to tell you today that what you're in is not your final conclusion. The other awesome thing I, I love about, about this woman is that she doesn't allow what debilitates her to define her. I'm going to get the band up because that helps me finish soon. It's, it's a, I need it. What debilitates you doesn't need to define you. What paralyzes you doesn't need to be the thing. You know, in this day and age, we, we say things like, I am depression. I am depressed. We give ourselves titles. I'm not at all into this kind of like, just pretend it doesn't exist. No, not at all. Let's be real about those things. Let's go to people. Let's ask for prayer. Let's ask for help. But friend, what you're experiencing right now, this stage of life that you're in, this thing that you're walking through, it's not your destiny. And what is debilitating you? Don't you dare let it define you. Can I just have a pastoral moment with you for a moment, just like I'm preaching to my church right now? Come on, when you approach church, you should never let your condition or your circumstances determine the praise that comes out of your mouth. You should never let your agreement with God's Word be determined by the things that are debilitating your life. We don't live outward inward. We live inward outward. We don't live. The outward shouldn't dictate how we're 
living inwardly, how we're feeling inwardly. In fact, we have an inward kingdom and our inward kingdom that we live by knows that there is a king that is on the throne. And despite what I'm going through, he is a God that's above it all. And so I'm wondering if there's someone here today that would choose in their heart right here, right now to say, I'm not going to let my circumstances define my praise. I'm not going to let my circumstances water me down. I'm not going to let my circumstances shut my mouth. There is a praise in me because it's not about what I'm going through. It's about who I'm looking to. So come on, audacious church. Would you go ahead and give God a praise? Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Yes! Yes! Come on, just sit down for two more minutes. You guys stay up here, don't go anywhere. Keep it right there. Her, the Bible says that she could not go unnoticed. The title of this message, I should have given it to you at the start, but it's called, Now You See Me. The reason why it's called that is because when you touch God, it doesn't matter who you are and what's happening in your life. There is a behavior that takes place. There is a praise that just comes out of your mouth. There is a dance that you begin to do and you don't care who's watching. There's a sound that begins to come. There's an action, there's something that begins to happen in your life. And you know, the, the awesome thing is, is, is uh, people have said that English people, as a generalization here, uh, are, are conservative by nature. I don't believe it, I'm just saying, I have heard that somewhere on the Google. It was a, not a reputable website either. But friend, what I'm seeing before me is not a church that's bound or living to the cultural norm or status quo, but what I see in front of me is a church that is saying we're, gonna, we're not gonna live according to what's happening out here. We don't praise according to what's cool by the world standards. Our, our world is not gonna be the debilitating factor. We're a church that love Jesus. We're a church that are not going to no one go unnoticed. We're a church. We're a church that have encountered God and her behavior was indicative of her encounter. Right. Yeah. Moses had an encounter with a burning bush. He entered that encounter full of insecurity, but he left that encounter full of vision. He entered that encounter running from Pharaoh and running from his destiny, running from his identity, but he ran in to Pharaoh's house with a word in his mouth. David had an encounter. He was minding his own business and that young shepherd boy had an encounter with the oil of God. The anointing of God came upon David and he was anointed king. It was this same David that went and stood before all the armies of Israel Israel and the Philistines and he didn't have anything special but what he did have was an encounter with God he had the oil of God on his life and friend wherever you go and whatever's happening in your world an encounter with God you take that same oil that David took that ultimately brought down Goliath Elisha Elisha had an encounter with God he received the mantle of Elijah Gideon the least of the least of the least he was nobody. He had every reason not to do anything significant with his life, but he didn't let his cultural status, his social status define him. Instead, friend, that when the angel of the Lord spoke to him, he received courage and supernatural ability to go ahead and do what called him to be. One encounter with God changes everything. Your yes plus God's yes equals the miraculous. Joseph had an encounter with God in a dream. Jacob wrestled with God and he walked differently for the rest of his life. Blind Bartimaeus cried out in the name of Jesus. Everyone, religion was telling him to be quiet, but he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus healed him that day. A blind man went from having no vision to being able to see. Come on, somebody. One encounter with God 
God changes everything. Would you stand to your feet today? I just wonder today how many of you are ready to step out of your initial condition because you know it's not your final conclusion. I wonder how many of you today are ready to step out of that thing that's been debilitating you, holding you down, and step into everything God has for your life. Friend, you can't receive this from a preacher today. You can only receive it from the King of all glory. And his name is Jesus. So come on, would you reach out your hands right now? Thank you, Father. Revival fire blow across this place right now. Come on, just open your mouth. Just begin to reach out to him. Say, Jesus, I need you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we hunger for your touch. Hunger for your touch. Oh, come on, lift your voices and cry out to him. We need your touch, Lord. Cry out. Spirit of God, won't you blow in this place right now? Come on, I see chains just falling off people. Who's that person that you need a financial miracle in your business right now? Just lift your hands. God's going to do something in this place. Who's that person right now that you've been believing God to heal your body? What the doctors have declared, they've said it's final. They've said it's over. They've said you're, you're done for. You've only got a little while to go. But God's yes says no, it is finished. By your by my stripes you've been healed. So come on, reach out. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. If you need a breakthrough right now, I believe the Holy Spirit is here. Come on, would you reach out your hands? As a position of faith right now, let the anointing of God come upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord. Come on, if you're joining us online campus, whatever you can do to just stretch out your faith to touch Him, I believe He wants to touch you wherever you are, whatever you're going through right now. Sweet presence of the Lord, Jesus, we need you, we need you, we need you. Come on, I want to hear a hunger just rise up in you. Oh, we need you, we need you, we need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, we need you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, maybe you're in this place, you don't know Jesus. You're away from God. There are three types of people here today. Number one, you don't know Jesus. You've never had an encounter with Him. Number two, maybe you're all right with Him, but you walked away from God. Whatever reason, I'm not saying you're not saved, but you know in your heart that you need to give your life to Him. Third type of person is you might be right with God. Now's your moment just to begin to pray for these 30 seconds. Most important part of this service. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, you say, Matt, I'm away from God. 
I once was right, walked away, but here I am today. I want to pray for you, friend, whoever you are. And just so I know who I'm praying with today, would you quickly lift your hands? I'll see your hand, then you can put it back down again. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, lift your hand up high. We just want to make sure I can see who I'm praying with over this side, up the back there. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Come on, is there someone else over here? Just lift your hand. God is the answer to your life, friend. He loves you, has a plan for your life. Just reach out. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. So come on, begin this journey of walking with God. Say, Matt, pray for me. Just quickly raise your hand. I'll see your hand. Then you can put it back down again just for this last moment. Say, Matt, pray for me. Awesome. What we're going to do right now. Thank you, sir. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. We're going to give our lives to Jesus today. Say these words. Say, Jesus. Come on, pray a little louder. Say, Jesus, I come before you today. And I declare in front of all these people that I believe in you. I believe you died. I believe you rose again. So right now, I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for you to change me. I turn from my old life into this new one with you. And from this moment on, I thank you, God, that I'm saved. I'm right with God. And I'm a child of God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, come on, can we go ahead and thank God, honour God for what He's doing.